Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. Welcome to the show. Today I'm going to talk about some of the things that I saw, many of the things that I saw actually, in the December's previews catalog. First up is uh, from Dark Horse. This is Tomb Raider number one. Gail Simone is at it again. Uh, first she tackles Red Sonia, and now she's taking on uh, Lara Croft. This is, as it says here, the official continuation of Lara Croft's story from the 2013 video game that sold over 3.5 million copies. I wonder if Dark Horse thinks that they're really going to get 3.5 million copies of the comics out of this. I sincerely doubt it. Uh, anyway, this has Nicholas Daniel Sema on pencils, Juan uh, Gideon on inks, and Michael Atia on colors with a nice cover from Dan Dos Santos. This is an ongoing 32 pages, 350 for that. If you're into uh, Lara Croft at all, or perhaps just Gail Simone in general. I just wanted to point this out. This is uh, from DC, Forever Evil number six. Uh, what, what draws me to this, besides the fact that it's, it's the Forever Evil uh, event that's been going on, uh, it says here, The Final Fate of Nightwing. And as anybody who listens to the podcast knows, uh, Nightwing is one of my very favorite characters, and I'll be really, really upset if Dan Dio finally gets his way and kills off everyone's uh, favorite sidekick. Also from DC, the first contact storyline that's going to go run through uh, looks like Batman, Superman, and World's Finest. So it starts off, it looks like it's a three-part story. It starts off in Batman Superman number eight. And this is where uh, our Earth 2 characters of Power Girl and Huntress decide to tell uh, Superman and Batman you know, who they are and what happened to them. And that continues on in uh, World's Finest number 20, also solicited this month. But there's not much going on in, in terms of uh, describing what, what this historic meeting is going to be about or how it's going to go. Except there is a, a major threat returns in a way you won't believe, they promise us. Anyway, this is written by Greg Pak and Paul Levitz. With art by Kenneth Rocafort on Batman Superman 8 and R.B. Silva and Joe Weems on World's Finest Number 20. I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be an interesting story, even if it's just a real short three-parter. I mean, considering uh, since World's Finest debuted, uh, this is something that I've been waiting for, for uh, for the, these two characters to encounter uh, other Earth-1 heroes and how, you know, especially if it came to light that they were from another world. So looking forward to that. Uh, Superman Lois Lane number one by Marguerite Bennett, art by Emmanu uh, Emanuela Lupacino. So this is this is a one shot, forty eight pages, four ninety nine. So it looks like Lois Lane is going to be chasing down uh, a story about her father, who's gaining more power in the government. Uh, Lucy's involved with, uh, in the drug scene. Uh, this is interesting. I didn't know about this. Lois thought she was rid of the influence of Brainiac, but now she finds that the computer tyrant of Kalu is calling out to her again. So apparently I missed something in the Superman comics. Had no idea about the whole Brainiac thing. Anyway, I just want to point that out. It's a Lois Lane-centric story. I think that's one thing that I missed quite a bit uh, in the year, year and a half that I read Superman in action comics. There wasn't enough Lois Lane in it. So I'll be picking that up. Speaking of the Superman family, uh, this is interesting. Supergirl number 28, the Red Daughter of Krypton storyline that uh, I'll talk about in another title in just a second. A red lantern ring is coming to get Kara, and it will change her forever. No lie. Not an imaginary story. It's really going to happen. The Red Daughter of Krypton starts here. Hmm. This is by Tony Bedard with art by... Yildare Sinar and Ray McCarthy. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. I, I, I have had trouble with this Supergirl character ever since the New Fifty Two. I've never really gotten into her, 
uh, or her portrayal by by the various people involved in the comic so far. Uh, and now they're going to throw this whole uh, Red Lantern thing into it. I don't know. It, it doesn't appeal to me whatsoever. I just thought it was interesting that they were going to do that, though. And like I like I mentioned, uh, so the Red Daughter of Krypton storyline plays into what comes next, and that is Green Lantern number 28 slash Red Lantern's number 28. And no, that's not a slip-up. Because this is, as it says here, an, un- an unprecedented event in one double issue flip book priced at just two ninety nine. Yeah, forty eight pages for two ninety nine. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm not sure why they're doing this. Is this a way? Are they trying to? I don't know. Get the story done more quickly, or which they could they could just do by by shipping both issues of the comic in the same month i don't know or or they're trying to drum up more sales for one over the um at the benefit from the benefit of the other i don't know anyway you get two books for the price of one so you can't beat that and i mentioned batman superman before with the the crossover between world's finest uh if you missed greg pack's debut on batman superman now you can get the volume one collection the hardcover called crossworld that's for twenty two ninety nine for one hundred forty four pages. You get Batman Superman one through four and Justice League twenty three point one Dark Side. Wow! So five issues for twenty three dollars. Doesn't seem quite right, does it? But it was a good story. Uh, well, with the exception of the Dark Side issue, that that first storyline, uh, Batman Superman one through four, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, a few more things, DC-wise. One is the Superman Earth-1 Volume 2 by J. Michael Straczynski and Shane Davis. Uh, that's out in trade in this month's previews. So you get, for $15, 128 pages. Uh, so if you missed out on the hardcover, here's your chance to read the trade a little, a little more cheaply. And then also there is the return of the DC Comics Presents line that, uh, you know, 100-page-ish series where, uh, or for, for $7.99, 8 bucks for almost 100 pages in this case. So I'm glad that they're, they're, that's coming back, at least for this, this uh, particular one, which is the Harley Quinn collection, which includes Batman Harley Quinn number 1, Joker's Asylum to Harley Quinn number one. That's not confusing at all, is it? Uh, and also stories from Batman Gotham Knights number 14, Countdown number 10, Batman Gotham Knights 30, and Batman Black and White number one. So I'll be picking this up. I love these DC Comics Presents collections. I wish they would do more of them. Uh, from Vertigo, we have a new six issue miniseries called The Royals Masters of War. Written by Rob Williams, art and cover by Simon Colby. This is a two ninety nine book. The year is nineteen forty. As the Blitz destroys London and kills thousands, the royal family looks on. But in this world, the only people with special abilities are royalty. And the purer the bloodline, the greater their abilities. So why don't they stop the carnage with their powers? A truce between the Earth's nobles has, has kept them out of our wars until now. When England's Prince Henry can take no more and intervenes, will it stop the planet's suffering or take it to another level? And this is from, like I said, Rob Williams, who has, it says here, done Judge Dredd Trifecta, Low Life, Adventures of Superman, and Dokken. And artist Simon Colby has worked on The Authority, Judge Dredd Year One, and Trifecta. So this is, you know, an alternate world history story. Uh, I'm, I'm on board for that. That sounds pretty good. Also from Vertigo, the Day Tripper Deluxe Edition hardcover. This is the, the a collection of the, the series from uh, Gabriel Ba and Fabio Moon, uh, which came out a few years ago, a uh, 10-issue miniseries, which was awesome. It was a, a, a hell of a ride, uh, visually stunning. Uh, if you missed out on that and want to get a, a nice hardcover edition, I guess here you go. Uh, this is 272 pages for $35. They're also coming out with a new 
edition of the Death Trade Paperback by Neil Gaiman. Uh, and various artists. I'm not going to go through all of them. <laughs> uh, 320 pages for 20 bucks. Collects Death, The High Cost of Living, number one through three. Death, The Time of Your Life, number one through three. Both series of which I have. Uh, also include our extras like Death Talks About Life, AIDS pamphlet, which I haven't seen, I don't think. And Stories from Vertigo, Winter's Edge, number two. And Sandman, Endless Nights. Uh, the short story in that, The Wheel. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it says, uh, and Sandman, The Endless Nights. Uh, the short story, The Wheel, from the 9-11 tribute book. Sandman, number 8, and number 20, and Art from the Death Gallery. So lots of stuff there for 20 bucks. I think that's pretty worth it. One thing from IDW. So you know they're doing these artist editions. And uh, here's an epic one. Uh, because it's Jack Kirby, the the new gods. I've never. I know this is gonna sound sacrilegious to to at least some of you, if not the majority of you. But I've never been a big Jack Kirby fan, uh, in in terms of his art. Uh, but I appreciate what he did for the medium. Uh, but I, I'm I'm actually really intrigued about this, and and I, I kind of want to get this one. Uh, the preview pages that I'm seeing here look pretty damn cool. And so this, this collects the New Gods issues 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, and 8, which is interesting. So you don't get a complete story, but, but you get, you know, you get his art, artist pages uh, uh, out of this. So that's pretty cool. I'm loving these uh, artist editions. I, I just wish I could afford them. Okay. Uh, Image Comics. There is a ton of new number ones coming out from Image Comics. I'm just going to run through those real quick. Uh, nothing out of these really caught my eye, uh, but you, you know your mileage may, may vary. So you got the Fuse number one by Anthony Johnston and Justin Greenwood, which reminds me a lot of, um, gosh, that Sean Connery movie where he's. He's uh, a marshal on a space station, and the title of which is uh, Escaping Me at the Moment. So that's what it reminded me of. You have Undertow by Steve Orlando, and art by Artyom Trakhanov. I'll just say that. Uh, where Atlantis is a world superpower. And so this is a lot of stuff set uh, in the water or underwater. The preview pages look interesting. The Revenger by Jonathan Ross and art by Ian Churchill. Uh, so, yeah, pretty gruesome uh, splash page image here, preview image here of a guy getting his, his face ripped off. So, pass. Apocalypse Al is a four-issue miniseries. Uh, this is by J. Michael Straczynski with art by Sid Cotian and Bill Farmer. Al uh, Allison Carter is a private detective. Her beat, the end of the world, or more accurately, preventing same. That idea right there kind of does interest me a little bit, but not enough to pick it up, I guess. The Mercenary Sea by Kel Simons with art by Matthew Reynolds. Uh, this is set in uh, 1938, the South Seas, uh, and you have ex-bootlegger Jack Harper, who captains the Venture, a refitted German U-boat with a crew of expats, mercenaries, and treasure hunters. And they do whatever it takes to stay afloat, often running up against pirates, headhunters, spies, and soldiers. So, it sounds to me like the premise of Firefly, only set in 1938. One Hit Wonder... Number one of five by Fabrice Sapolsky and art by Ariel Olivetti. I like I like the solicita solicitation text. If there was a thin line between reality and fiction, Richie Reese tore it down. Better, he crushed it, smashed it, destroyed it. From child star to hitman in Hollywood, this is the story of a glorious bastard. That's that's pretty good text. The art looks a little I don't know uh, photo referenced. But then what do I know about art? 
Uh, there's a new Invincible trade, Volume 19, The War at Home. I'll have to pick that up at some point. Okay, moving on to Marvel. Uh, first up here is Fantastic Four number one. All new Fantastic Four, written by James Robinson. Art by Leonard Kirk. So, James Robinson doing Fantastic Four. Hmm. That could be really good or not, not so much. So, I'll have to check that out. And this was, uh, this next one was, there's a lot of hubbub about this when it was first announced. Uh, this is Ms. Marvel, number one. Uh, be, I'm not sure why it was such a big deal, but I, um, other than, I guess, uh, that the, the, the main character, Kamala Khan, as it says here, is just an ordinary girl from, ordinary girl from Jersey City until she is suddenly empowered with extraordinary gifts. But who truly is the all new Ms. Marvel? Teenager? Muslim? Inhuman? Find out. Uh, I don't, I don't know why they feel the need to point out that she's Muslim. I think maybe that's, that was the big controversy. Anyway. She-Hulk gets another series, it looks like. Uh, but this time written by Charles Soule with Javier Polito on art. Wow, Charles Soule is writing just about every other book, it seems like. So she has a new practice, a new paralegal, and a mounting number of supervillains she's racking up as personal enemies. Hmm. Charles Soule doing it. I don't know. You know what, I, you know what, the, what they should do is uh, put out a miniseries uh, with She-Hulk and Daredevil, you know, from the legal angle. There you go, Marvel. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I never read this uh, in previous incarnations, but New Warriors gets a new number one. Uh, let's see. Adventurers Speedball and Justice have come together with a group of young heroes, including Nova, Sun Girl, and Hummingbird. Mm, the last two of which I do not know. And, and some new faces to stop the latest threat in the Marvel Universe, the Atlanteans, Inhumans, clones, and hundreds of other so-called superior beings living among the humans in the Marvel Universe. Uh, but not everyone is pleased about the high evolutionary has raised an army to combat the evolution of humanity, and the new warriors are locked in his sights. Uh, some of the characters I see here on this, I guess it's a cover, look intriguing. Uh, I don't know who they are, though. So I probably will pass this up, but there you go. Uh, this one, though, I, I will have a harder time passing up, I think. Uh, just for the character alone. Oh, and the artist. This is Loki, Agent of Asgard. Looks like it's a new ongoing. Two ninety nine though. Written by Al Ewing with Lee Garbett on the art. And I like Lee Garbett's stuff on the, the old Batgirl series. Uh, so anyway, Kid Loki's all grown up, which is something that we that just more or less recently happened in Young Avengers at the time of this recording, uh, which is too bad because I really liked um, Kid Loki, and now he's now he's older. So I'm not sure what to think of that. Uh, I guess I have to read this this comic to find out, right? Anyway, uh, he's all grown up. He's stronger, smarter, sexier, and just plain sneakier than ever. As as Guardia's one-man secret service, he's ready to lie, cheat, steal, bluff, and snog his way through the twistiest, turniest, and most treacherous missions the All-Mother can throw at him. So, Loki is a secret agent slash spy James Bondish type character now, I guess? Hmm. Guess I gotta find something for him to do. Okay. Here's the thing about Marvel that I don't like right now. So I'm looking at X-Men number one here, and it says X-Men number 10 dot now and 11 equals X-Men number one in all new Marvel now. Are they, is Marvel trying to make things difficult? I find it annoying, don't you? And there's a bunch of those in here where, you know, X issue uh, equals number one in the all-new Marvel Now crap. 
yeah, so here's Thor God of Thunder God of Thunder number nineteen dot now equals Thor God of Thunder number one. Fortunately it's still written by Jason Aaron with Isad Ribig on the art, so that's good. Nova thirteen dot now equals Nova number one. Captain America number sixteen dot now equals Captain America number one. Ugh. Guess I'm just getting grumpy, old and grumpy. Uh, there's a new X-Force comic coming out by Cy Spurrier and Rocky Kim on art. And that's it from Marvel. Moving on to other publishers. Okay, so I missed this. Right, well, I, I chose to miss it, but the God is Dead series from Jonathan Hickman from Avatar Press. So they're soliciting issues 6 and 7 here. The newest issues, but they're also giving us the enhanced issues for number one and number two. And what you get is this, the, the same comic that was number one previously, but also an all-new second story not available anywhere else from co-writer Mike Costa and artist uh, Rafa Ortiz. And that's the same for number two as well. So I guess if you wanted to get the individual issues... This is a way to start, a way to entice you to get the first two issues. I wonder if they're going to do 3, 4, and 5 this way or or, or whatever. Uh, I'm still going to wait for the trade. From Dynamite, Turok, the Dinosaur Hunter, number one, written by Greg Pak, which is, which is what caught my eye. Uh, Mirko Kolak is doing the art. Uh, again, this is this is one of those things where... I've never, never really been interested in the character, uh, but you know, I, I, I know of Turok, uh, and uh, Greg Pak is doing it, and I'm, I'm currently liking um, the stuff that Greg Pak is doing at DC, so maybe I should check that out. Okay, also from Dynamite, do yourself a favor and pick this up if you haven't already uh, in singles. Um, get Uncanny, Volume 1, Season of Hungry Ghosts, the trade paperback, by Andy Diggle, uh, Aaron Campbell, and Sean Phillips on the art. This is 20 bucks for 160 pages. Uh, you will not be disappointed. This is a, a fun romp. And for you comic book historians out there, Tomorrow's Publishing is soliciting the American Comic Book Chronicles, 1965 to 1969. So you get the you get the uh, the history, uh, the stories from the beginning of the Marvel Age of Comics. And then also uh, what DC tried to do to, to drum up more readers and more sales by doing some interesting things, uh, like putting Steve Ditko on Hawk and Dove, although that didn't last very long, uh, and Neil Adams returning uh, to Batman, or returning Batman from the, the camp version to the Dark Knight Detective uh, that we all know and love now. Uh, I have the 1980s version that they started with, and it looks gorgeous. I haven't read through it all, but, uh, I mean, Tomorrow's does classy, classy work. Uh, if you're not reading, if, you, if you're interested in, in comics from the standpoint of uh, the behind the scenes and the stories, uh, you know, why why things were done in this way, etc., um, you should be reading the material put out by Tomorrow's, including this book, but also their magazines. Oni Press has a new, looks like a new ongoing, I think, uh, called The Bunker. This is by Joshua Fialkov, uh, with art by Joe Infinari. This is, uh, at least this, this debut issue is double size, so it's 48 pages for $3.99. Uh, it says the smash hit digital comic comes to print. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of it, but anyway. So, it says here, when five friends go to bury a time capsule, before going their separate ways, they find a mysterious bunker stamped with their names and containing artifacts from a time that has yet to come. Will their, discuss will their discovery save the world or doom it? And also, here's a, a quote from USA Today, a gut punch of a last page, readers will be back for a second helping. So that, that's, ah, that really intrigues me. I'm going to have to pick that one up. 
from Valiant Entertainment, the the final um, title that I'm getting from that company, uh, Archer and Armstrong, are getting a zero issue. This is Archer number zero. Once upon a time, a baby went into Project Rising Spirit. So you get uh, get Archer's, I guess, secret origin story. Anyway, uh, sure, it's sure to be a hoot. Uh, they're also releasing Archer and Armstrong Volume 4, Sect Civil War trade paperback, which collects issues 14 through 17. Uh, this is Again, this is one of those comics where if you haven't gotten into this, uh, I'm sorry, and you really should ch uh, check it out. Okay, so we're I'm leaving the realm of comics, comic books, into some other things here. Two things on this page. This is page 375. The DC Batman Team of Heroes Wall Clings. So you get the Batman Brave and the Bold Team of Heroes here. So you get 16 pages of wall clings for 10 bucks. You can put these on your wall. I... I may just get this, and not for my kids. <laughs> uh, and Marvel is also coming out with uh, something that I hope to get, maybe uh, in, a, on, in the, the discount rack at the bookstore at some point. The Marvel Encyclopedia 75th Anniversary Edition. Now, I think I have already have a Marvel Encyclopedia, but uh, 75th Anniversary Edition... I'm a sucker for the anniversary stuff, so it's updated and expanded. They're really trying to get me to buy this thing, and they don't have to twist my arm too too much either. Considering that how cold it's been, at least in my neck of the woods, it's been in single digits for two weeks now, or hovering in, in the low double digits. Hoodies are something that I've never really been into wearing, but uh, these particular ones I may make an exception. Also considering the weather, you got the uh, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman New 52 symbol hoodies, along with the t-shirts, but but the hoodies look pretty cool. I, I, I might have to hint at my wife that, that she should get me one of these for my birthday or something. And man, I'm not a big Red Hood fan, but they have a t-shirt here, just a black t-shirt with the Red Hood, Red Bat symbol on it. But I think it looks pretty cool. And for those of you with a lot of money, at least a lot more than I have anyway, you can get yourself a Batman Arkham City Nightwing Arsenal 1 to 1 replica. 1 to 1 scale. Weighs 30 pounds, measures 24 by 24, tall and wide, and 22 inches deep. And you get uh, these Nightwings Escrima sticks, and the, the base and the sticks glow, and you get some other papers here. Anyway, wow, that looks pretty damn cool. It's only $1,100, with a $275 deposit if you order now. I don't suppose anybody wanna, wants to donate to the show. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Batgirl gets the artifact statue treatment, um, which looks gorgeous. I ordered the, from last month's previews, I ordered the Nightwing artifact statue. I'm really tempted to get the Batgirl one as well, but it's interesting. But, so in last month's previews, the Nightwing one, it was a full page ad. Batgirl only gets a little more than half a page. And then underneath that is a, a, a Marvel Comics Spider-Woman uh, Bishujo? Bish, bish, Bishoujo? Anyway, statue. Why why does Batgirl not get a full page? I, I don't get that. What doesn't seem right for some reason. Maybe maybe previews was tied on space, maybe, I guess. Okay, and finally, I just thought these were amusing. For those that like the pop vinyl figures, you, here's the pop Star Trek collection. And, of course, you get Kirk, Spock, Scotty. Uh, and they, they look to be um, modeled after the original series actors, not the, the movie actors. 
the recent movie actors. You also get a Klingon. Uh, there's an Orion girl and an Andorian. Very cute. There, there's a ton of pop stuff in here. You got the Goonies, Planet of the Apes, My Little Pony, uh, the Big Lebowski. I should get I should get the dude for for a friend of mine. A Judge Dredd, Supernatural. The two guys from Supernatural. Good lord. And not to be outdone, uh, as far as the Star Trek pop vinyl figures go, you got the Big Bang Theory guys dressed up in Star Trek original series uniforms as pop vinyls. Wow. Okay. Anyway, so that's my look at things from the previous catalog for December. Uh, I don't, don't always do this. Uh, as I said, I believe the last time I did this, I don't always go through previews. Uh, just when... I see a lot of stuff that, that interests me and I think might also interest you and may also uh, affect uh, your order pre-ordering for this month. But before I go, I have some feedback that I received from my episode 54, the Chicken Little titled episode, uh, where I kind of rambled on about the my, my feelings about the state of affairs at DC and just kind of comics in general. Uh, I got an email from Peter Rios of the Daily Rios at thedailyrios.com. says, Eric, really enjoyed this episode. Listened to it today while doing dishes and found myself agreeing and disagreeing, but mostly agreeing with the DC assessment. You mentioned, about, uh, you mentioned sales and the business end of it all. That at least is doing well for DC, especially in terms of where their numbers were in the five to seven months that led up to the New 52. People who like to watch sales automatically want to assume that DC is failing because in some months it's second to Marvel. But they fail to realize that entire comic book market share has increased over the past two years. So sure, DC might be second in terms of market share or units in some months. Their slice of the pie might be smaller than Marvel's, but the entire pie is bigger. So their second place in 2013 is very, very different to second place pre-New 52. And of course, Peter's right about that. So something is working that we're not seeing. Maybe the rebelliousness of 90s comics, especially those DC slash Marvel comics that were in reaction to what Image was doing, is attractive to a subset of readers that we just aren't hearing from. I'm not sure. Maybe DC has tapped into that again on some level. Maybe digital and piracy has fed into print sales. Maybe it's all about licensing and suddenly DC has a whole new pool of characters slash concepts that they're raking in the profit. If they are capturing the bottom line they want with a universe that has shifted in tone, I don't see them altering things anytime soon. And, and exactly, and that, that's exactly what I, I think I was trying to get across in that episode. Uh, I, I was perhaps lamenting a bit, um, fearing that that's the case. Anyway, Peter said some things about the, my, my, my quick comment about the, 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 you know, not all comics in the 90s were bad. You know, there was there was good things. Uh, Busick's Avengers, his Iron Man. Dan, uh, this is from Peter. Dan Jurgens on Thor, Wade on Cap. And eventually, and especially, he says, Marvel Knights in 1998. And other titles of DC were more in reaction to 90s comics, or more in reaction to Image. And he ends with, okay, I'm rambling back to work. Just wanted to say that this episode was the type I enjoy. Free, free form thoughts on a topic that help make listeners think. Kudos. Uh, thank you, Peter, very much. That's those are very kind words. I, I, I've, like I said in the episode, I, I felt I was rambling a little bit, and I, I probably should have made some notes before I started the episode. I, I mean, I did I, in my head, but I probably should have written them down, uh, make sure I wasn't rambling too much, and I, I failed at that. Uh, anyway, I appreciate the the nice the nice words you had to say about that. So thank you very much. And if you have comments that you would like to leave about this latest episode, or any other for that matter, uh, please do so. You can email me at longboxreview at gmail.com. You can also leave me voicemail at 208-953-1841, or you can leave comments at the blog at longboxreview.wordpress.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye.